Welcome to this recorded service of First Presbyterian Church of Glasgow, Kentucky. It's a joy to have you join us once again this week. Today's service is intended for October 29th, 2023. But whenever you watch it, you're certainly, uh, I'm certainly glad you are, no matter what day or what year. If you're watching today by YouTube, uh, thank you. If you've not done so and would like to, please subscribe to our channel. Also, if you're viewing today by Glasgow Electric Plant Board Channel 6, we welcome you at 11.30. So uh, again, my greetings to you. I appreciate your viewership and I appreciate your attendance at this recorded service of First Presbyterian Church. I want to begin by saying that um, today, October 29th, I will not be in the pulpit today. I'm taking a few days off, uh, taking a break for a few days. And filling the pulpit today in Glasgow is my colleague, a commissioned lay pastor or a commissioned ruling elder, we call them sometimes in our circles, is a commissioned lay pastor, Nathan Dick. Nathan is here to fill the pulpit and I'm glad to have him here to give me a Sunday off. But I do also want to invite you to um, our service November the 5th. It's a special day for us and in many churches. All Saints Day is the first day in November. And so the first Sunday after that is All Saints Sunday. It's the one day, one day of the year that we pause to recognize those in our church family that have passed away the previous year. We're doing that on November the 5th. We've had four members of our church family pass away since our last All Saints Sunday. We're going to recognize them. We're going to have special musicians, special music. Uh, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. So please do come if you can and be part of this special service with us. 10 o'clock, any Sunday, but especially if you can, November the 5th. We'd love to see you. Now today we're going to talk about a passage in Matthew's Gospel. In fact, if you want to go ahead and get it in your home Bible, it's, it's Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. You know, today on the church calendar that, that we use in the Presbyterian Church, and I think many other churches have a similar church calendar, Today marks sort of the end of what we call ordinary time. You know, those months in the summer that there's no real special occasion church-wise. We call those Sundays, you know, ordinary time. Well, today is the last time that we'll have an ordinary time message because starting in November and then for a few months, you know, every Sunday is something special. November the 5th is All Saints Sunday. Then after that, we'll have our Stewardship Sunday. Then after that, our Thanksgiving Sunday. Then after that is Christ the King Sunday. And after those, there's four Sundays of Advent, Christmas Eve service, uh, Epiphany Sunday. So there's a lot of special Sundays coming up right in a row. And so I thought, you know, as we transition from sort of the ordinary time to the special occasions, coming up in November, December, and January, let's look at a familiar passage that you've heard before, you've heard it quoted before. It's Matthew chapter 22. And this passage has to do with one of my least favorite subjects, paying taxes, right? You know, uh, we have to pay some taxes, but boy, Uncle Sam uh, sometimes ask for too much perhaps uh, some years. And taxes are a, uh, you know, frankly, it, they're a sore spot for many people. Taxes, paying taxes. Um, but at least, you know, if we, if we pay a tax to Barron County, then at least we know that our money is staying in Barron County. Or if we pay a tax, our Kentucky state tax, our Kentucky state income tax, at least we know that tax money is staying in Kentucky. Or our federal tax, at least we know that 
not all of it, but a good part of it, uh, stays in the U.S. of A., right? Back in the days of Jesus, taxes were, were more than just a touchy subject. Um, taxes paid then, most of that money went to Rome, you know, way, way, long ways away. Taxes were uh, unfair. The tax collectors of that day where Jesus lived were oftentimes, honestly, uh, cheats. Um, they would overcharge taxes put that money in their own pocket. They weren't very popular, let me tell you. So taxes in the days of Jesus were even, you know, even disliked even more than today. But the thing about taxes then is that you really couldn't talk about taxes. You couldn't complain too much in public. Because if you complain too much in public about your taxes, you might get a visit from a tax collector. Or worse, you may get a visit from a Roman soldier. So you sort of had to suffer in silence when it came to paying your taxes in the days of Christ. And um, it, it, it was a uh, sensitive subject, not one that was talked about openly. So with that backdrop, here we go, Matthew 22. The Pharisees try to get Jesus to talk about this touchy subject of taxes in their day. Matthew 22, verse 15. I'm reading from the uh, New Revised Standard Version. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So the Pharisees were planning to trap Jesus and the subject they were going to use to do that was the subject of paying taxes, right? They knew that was a touchy subject. So they sent, the Pharisees sent their disciples to Jesus along with the Herodians. Um, Herodians, you know, I sort of just have learned to, to think of the Herodians like a political party they were Jews that aligned themselves with King Herod, it seems like. So um, they, were, they, they weren't friends of Jesus either. So verse 16, the Pharisees sent their disciples to Jesus along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, now listen how they, um, how they try to butter Jesus up, right? They, they try to do this. They say, Jesus, uh, Teacher, Teacher. We know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. You see how they try to, you know, talk them up? So here comes the trap. Here's, here's the trap question. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? And the reason why that was a trap question is that no matter how Jesus answered it, yes or no, he would be in trouble. If Jesus says, you know, it's not lawful to pay taxes, well, then he'd have the Roman soldiers looking for him. If he said that it is lawful to pay taxes, he would lose credibility with the people. So that's, that was a trap question. But here's how Jesus responded. Verse 18. But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought Jesus a denarius. Then Jesus said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. All right. So what I find interesting in that. Jesus says to these Pharisees and Herodians, he says, give me a coin. And they did. Now that to me implies that Jesus didn't have any money on him. Otherwise, he would have pulled his own coin out of his pocket and said, see this coin? He didn't do that. He had to, he had to ask for a coin. To me, that implies he didn't have any money, which I find interesting, uh, on him. And so he takes the coin and says, you know, whose picture's on this coin? And they said, well, it's the emperor. It's Caesar. Then Jesus says, 
Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Those of you raised with the King James Version will remember this as, Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, render to God the things that are God's. Right? And the last verse, When these Pharisees and Herodians heard this, they were amazed. And they left Jesus and went away. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for it. The last verse we read there, when Jesus said, you know, give to Caesar or give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and give to God the things that are God's. We read there that these Pharisees and Herodians were amazed. Uh, another version, the um, RSV says they were, they, they marveled. They were sort of awestruck by this answer. They were amazed by it. And so I think about, you know, what, what made them so amazed to hear this from Jesus? You know, we talked about a few weeks ago how Jesus came from heaven, right? Came from heaven and was born as Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. And he brought with him, we read in scripture, the very secrets of heaven, right? He would know those secrets. Jesus brought these secrets of heaven to earth. Here is one time that Jesus, one time of many, many, that Jesus shares a secret from heaven. The secret from heaven is this, that he shares here. And it's something I've talked about at least ten times this year. Not because it's important to me, but because it's what scripture has highlighted. What Jesus is sharing with us is the fact that there, there, there exist two separate planes of existence that we're a part of. One is we live in the physical world, the earth, uh, the place where we um, you know, can touch and see and hear and smell and taste, right? The other world we live in is spiritual. There's a spiritual realm, there's a worldly realm, and both exist, and we're part of both. Now, we know very well what it means to live in the world, the worldly realm. We understand that very well, right? We know, we know what it's like to pay taxes. You know, that's part of the worldly realm. Uh, we know what it's like to experience death, right? Ben Franklin said, you know, years ago, the only two sure things are, what, death and taxes? We, we, we understand that. We experience it. Uh, that's living in the world. We, we understand what it means to get up and go to work, right? Uh, we understand what it means to go and hang out with our friends. You know, that's part of the world. We understand um, what it means to uh, plan a vacation, right? How to plan your trip. You know, th those are fun things. We enjoy the earth and, and it brings us hardship too. It's, it's a bit of both, but we understand what it means to live in the world. We got that down pat. We got it. What Jesus is asking us to do here, I think, is to realize that Yes, navigate the world. You have to. You live in it. Render to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. Right? But there's another responsibility. Give to God the things that are God's. Jesus doesn't say, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's or render to God the things that are God's. He says, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and, and also, also, give to God the things that are God's. Live in the world, yes. Remember, you also live in the spiritual realm, too. You have responsibilities in both areas. Both areas. And most people don't realize that. I think most folks go through life and never even contemplate, or rarely contemplate, what it means to be responsible to their spiritual side, their spiritual existence. They don't even think about it. They just see the world and that's all they think is there. And so the sermon title, if you had our church bulletin, I, I don't see one in front of me, but the sermon title in the bulletin said, uh, was finding 
or living balanced, right? Living balanced. Living balanced. Are we living balanced? Are we are we paying attention, yes, to the world and and yes also to the spirit? We're part of both realms. We have responsibilities both ways. Are we paying attention to both of them or just one? That's why these Pharisees and Herodians were amazed when Jesus said this. They had never even you know, heard this talk before, that we have responsibilities in the world and spiritual. It was a new concept. It was a, it was a secret from heaven that Jesus gives, right? And so the secret is ours as well. We have responsibilities both in the world, yes, but also in the spiritual realms. We have responsibilities there too. Are we in balance? Um, most people, I, I think, are not. They give all their attention to the world and so little to the spirit. There's a few. That's the opposite. They live... They live on the mountaintops in the Himalayas, right? They spend all their time in spirit and, and never really much time in the real world. But there's a balance we have to receive, uh, to have to achieve. We have to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, the world, and we have to give to God what is God's, the spirit. We're responsible in both realms. Okay, so I put together a little test to test us, test me, test to test you, to see how we're doing in both in both areas. Okay. We know how to punch a time clock. Or if we're retired, at one time we knew how to punch a time clock. We know how to work in the world. We know how to spend time working. But are we also balanced and spending time in prayer? in studying scripture or inspirational writings, time in meditation, time in worship, right? Are we balanced? Are we balanced? We know how to pay taxes, right? We, we know that, we got that down pat. We know, how to, we, we know how to give to Uncle Sam the things that are Uncle Sam's, or to give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. But do we also know how to truly forgive somebody else? The spiritual responsibility. Do we? Are we balanced? We know how to plan a vacation, the worldly uh, part of our life, the joyful part too. We, we know how to plan a vacation, yet do we know how to fully trust God's plan for us? Can we trust God's you know, spontaneous plan as it bubbles up in our life? Are we balanced, right? We know how to attend a funeral visitation, to go down that receiving line, to express condolences. We know how we know how to do that. We know how. That's worldly. But do we also have the vision to see that death is just an illusion? Are we balanced? We know how to hang out with our friends. I enjoy it, and you do too. We know how to do that. But do we know how to help strangers? You see? Uh, we have responsibilities in both areas. We know how, we know that we live free from sin through our faith in Jesus Christ, right? We know we're, we're free, and we're free. But do we also not judge others? You see the balance we have to strike? Both worlds, spirit and the world. I'll give you one more. Um, as, a, as a dad who, who had two sons in travel soccer, I know that my wife and I, we've been to every soccer field in the state of Kentucky at least once. Guarantee it. So we know how to find soccer fields in Kentucky. Uh, you know how to find where you're going, all right? We can find, we can find our destination, but can we find God's presence right now? It's here. Can we find it? See, we're responsible to the world we're responsible to the Spirit. We have responsibilities in both realms. There's a balance we have to achieve. We have to give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and, and we have to give to God the things that are God's. So I encourage us all to contemplate that today. Now, how are we doing 
we do very well with the world. You know, we know how, it, how, how to navigate it. How are we doing in spirit? Are we balanced? Because we do have responsibilities in both areas. Please join me in prayer. We thank you, Almighty God, for this lesson from Jesus. This reminder that we are responsible, yes, for the world and the world we live in and our actions in it, but also responsible for our actions in the Spirit. Jesus amazed the Pharisees with this revelation, and may we learn and be amazed too to fully realize and contemplate what it means to have responsibilities and to be in balance as we live both in the world and in the Spirit. Bless us today as we balance our own lives in such a way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.